thank you so much for uh, having me here once again. And this is a very, very interesting time in our history. Last time we were together, the world situation wasn't quite as challenging for us in America and everywhere in the world really, and the change is upon us now. And I believe Chaga is an intimate part of this change that's coming towards better health in America and on the planet, really. And that's because there is a meeting of East and West taking place at this time. You know, the economy of China is getting to become similar. It's the second largest economy in the world, and they have a whole different medical system called traditional Chinese medicine, which is now beginning to be integrated into Western medicine, so it's now called integrative medicine. It used to be called complementary and alternative medicine, but now it's becoming integrated. And most of you uh, here are leaders in the field of working with Chaga and bringing its health benefits to the world and to Americans and everywhere. So I want you for a minute um, to just visualize what Chaga is as a being, as an energetic structure, as a nutrient, as a phytobotanical, as a medicinal mushroom. And visualize a tree growing in the northern part of the world above the 45th north latitude in the cold, barren areas of Siberia and other places in the north where there are different environmental factors active. And visualize that and see this mushroom that grows on a tree for 10, 20 years before it's harvested, unlike mushrooms that grow up fast. And as I, this morning, was meditating on what I was going to say outside of the more prepared slides to introduce it, I started to communicate with this being called Chaga Mushroom. And I recognized that it's really an individual plant. It's like living on a living tree, taking life forces from it, serving the tree in some way, but also taking the vitality of these beautiful birch trees and other trees it grows on, but primarily birch trees. And it's concentrating the environmental energy into something that is extremely potent. In fact, it's a living pharmacy. It's a living energetic ecosystem that is needed now because in Western medicine, drugs are starting not to work so well. We're getting uh, organisms that are resistant to some of our drugs. Uh, many of the generic Western drugs are now coming out of the patent pipeline. They're falling off a cliff. It said this morning in Wall Street Journal. So we need new things. And people are complex beings. And we're finding that isolating just one or two substances out of a phytobotanical product out of a vegetable or plant often doesn't keep the synergy, the interaction intact. So to me, what I heard and what I truly believe is that Chaga is still asleep in the north and it's wakening up. And it's wakening up and you are its messengers. You are the people who are going to let people know about its medicinal benefits. You are going to be chosen to be literally disciples of this wonderful mushroom and have it communicate. Health, vitality, you know, its, its mission is to help humanity. It grows in these northern climates under adversity. It's been used by a people that are in the Siberian and Conti people and other people for 400 years. And they didn't care about the science as we are in the West, but they understood that it had this chi, this vitality, which ultimately in Western terminology comes down to chemical interactions that in the final analysis reduce to energy flows in the form of electrons in the mitochondria, the energy producing parts of the cell and so forth. 
but these are biological response modifiers. These things change the biology of cells and bring it into vitality. And so you are to become stewards of chaga because right now in the US we're spending two trillion dollars on healthcare, the most in any country in the world, and we're not getting the health benefits. In traditional Chinese medicine, we care about harmony and balance. We care about uh, the sense of self-reliance. People need to do prevention in order to go forward with this. And nutrition is more than just taking something in. I've always told people nutrition involves five things. It's ingestion, what you put in your mouth. It's digestion, how you break it down. And you just saw an experiment to show nutrients, you know, when they conduct electricity, so you can um, digest them. And the third step is assimilation. You have to get it into your body through the digestive system. The fourth is elimination. You need to have good elimination so you're not overwhelmed. This is a big problem in America now, as we have a real problem with weight gain and obesity and so on. So we're not eliminating and we're not eliminating the toxins. And the fifth step in nutrition to me is what is the purpose for it? What is your incarnation, your life about? And the purpose is to be healthy so we can fulfill our inner spiritual soul direction. And so to me, chaga is a lot more than just another medicinal mushroom. It's actually a very unique individual being. So I'm going to demonstrate a lot of slides and I hope that you won't be put off by some of the biochemistry and some of the scientific papers there to illustrate that when you talk to your healthcare providers, when you talk to your uh, doctors or acupuncturists or chiropractors or people in the community who use these alternative and complementary medicine modalities, that you say there's real science behind this so that you can be authoritative in your conviction that you are going to be helping people because there's too many stories demonstrating in an anecdotal basis in science we like to do studies and we have to do studies and there simply have not been a lot of studies done on chaga yet uh, in humans uh, controlled cohort studies double blind studies because there is no market for people to do it when they can't patent something yet it is vital that these stories also come out because they give you a stepping stone for this ultimately being done when we have a healthcare system that cares more about these nutritional products. Is that, uh, it's very important also that we don't claim that it does these disease modulation things because we just don't have the data there in humans. We do have a lot of animal studies and we have uh, a lot of uh, uh, cell studies and chemical studies, but they're no substitute for human studies. So, um, another thing to remember is, uh, and I think this was touched on earlier by Stephen, to me it's actually that the epigenetics, that is to say the modulation of your genome, your genome is your genetic code, which is 25% of its importance, 75% science is finding is the environment. The environment includes the nutrition or the lack of nutrition, which is really the big issue nowadays. There's a lot of deficiency in the soil. And so there aren't the nutrient density. You can analyze different foods and there can be a tenfold or more increase in the number of vitamins and minerals in those foods, depending on where they're grown, what kind of cultivation they had. So it's you know, what you drink, what you eat, the radiation, that's electromagnetic, which I'll talk about a little bit in the environment, the pollution, that is the chemicals we've released into the environment, which is massive. You know, when we've analyzed now cord blood of babies, the cord blood that is fed from the mother to the child, it's loaded with different chemicals in different amounts. The baby is actually getting fed in utero already some of the chemicals the mother has in her body. It gets transferred across the placenta. And, um, and then, of course, exercise. We need to keep our body moving. These are environmental factors that modulate how your genome, how your genetics is expressing itself. 
And when we add something like medicinal mushrooms, which are biological response modifiers to your diet, um, or onto the skin, which is the largest absorptive organ in the body, you're getting this right into your body. You're getting this into the cells. It nourishes you. It starts to change the chemistry in a subtle way. And therefore, we start having an opportunity to get healthy. So I, I always like to start with a, a little prayer from Thich Nhat Hanh, but which could also be said, this is what might be what mushroom chaga is telling us, and it goes like this. May you be filled with loving kindness. May you be well. May you be peaceful and at ease. May you be happy. That simple poem, uh, that simple prayer, is the prayer of, of this kingdom, remembering that chaga mushroom is really part of the fungi kingdom, which is really a separate kingdom than vegetable, animal, or mineral. And uh, it does this. Now let's have a look for a minute how much money Americans spend in 2007 on out-of-pocket. It's almost $34 billion, out of which complementary and alternative medicine was only about 1.5%. Uh, but that's out of a total health care budget um, of uh, to over $2 trillion. And um, you can see most of this was for conventional care. But still, $34 billion on alternative, you know, got people's attention in the government and in corporations as well. Increasingly, the importance of nutrition is being recognized. Uh, it's uh, very important now that uh, we recognize that fish oils and for cardiovascular disease is being, are being used by doctors, uh, traditional allopathic Western doctors. Uh, cranberries people take for urinary tract infections, probiotics for intestinal health, and so on. People are encouraged to drink moderately some wine because it has resveratrol in it, which is a polyphenol. I'll talk about those in a minute and so on. So we're starting to recognize that. And complementary and alternative medicine is now being taught in medical schools, which is really great because doctors, a new generation of doctors, are becoming educated. And there's more increase in this CAM, complementary and alternative medicine. And those practitioners would be a real good target if you explain to them what Chaga can do for them. I'm uh, very interested and active in a field called energy medicine, which is part of what this whole field of CAM is. This is from the government website, the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine, in which we have mind-body medicine, manipulative medicine like your chiropractor might do, and then the biologically based practices are these phytonutrients and nutritional factors. And chaga really fits into two of these categories because it's both chemistry to me as well as energetic, and I'll explain that. So it's both the biologically based and the energy based practices combined in one nutrient because of its unique biochemistry, including its melanin content, that's the dark pigment, and so forth. So in energy medicine, we differentiate between that which we can measure which is called veritable energy medicine. Those are things like your electrocardiogram or when you're getting an MRI, that's actually part of energy medicine. And then there's the subtle energy that can't be measured so well, but in Chinese medicine, they feel that in your pulses when they feel your qi, they might measure uh, various different new devices with new devices that have been developed in Russia and in Europe, we use those. Um, for um, assessing the life energy in substances. So chaga, I believe, has a special place in this complementary and alternative medicine. Now let's talk about energy for a minute um, because, you know, right now uh, there is a, a, a great change taking place in the solar system that I can't get into too much, but we're constantly being energized by the solar wind, the energy from the sun. And when that comes into our planet, it can lead in the northern parts into something called the corona borealis, or the northern lights. Here's a picture of a beautiful spiral pattern just recently in Finland. And this is where these trees grow. And so they're literally also interacting with the energies of the sun through the solar wind and the northern lights, which are a different light that will also shine on them in the, in the night. And when the solar wind hits the Earth, you can see that it, it hits the northern latitudes. That's where chaga grows. 
and I was sort of inspired to, to tell you that it's different than what grows in the more southern latitudes. Now, Chaga was tested in Asia with various different instruments and energetic testing methods, and they were found that it has a lot of high chi, or a lot of vitality. And even the water extract, and perhaps especially the water extract, uh, can dissolve many of these nutrients because of the special processing we use. Now, um, it also is very able to deal with stress response because it grows in an environment that's pretty harsh climate where there are difficulties with um, the trees themselves being stressed. Trees like humans also can undergo cold stress and radiation stress and uh, other things. Now here's some of the summary that you know about, uh, and I will demonstrate why it is this complex living pharmacy. In Western medicine, we have a drug for this and a drug for that because they are isolated compounds, and they often, because of having been taken out of the whole of the plant, have side effects. These side effects are unwanted, and some people really suffer from them, and we actually have Western medicine now has acknowledged that the fourth largest cause of death is medically uh, caused from either drug or, you know, uh, reactions or hospital errors and so on. So, you know, it's better if we can take natural things in my way of looking at it. And so the antibacterial, anti-inflammatory uh, in animal and plant studies uh, and cell studies, the anti-tumor, antiviral characteristics, the blood sugar regulation in animals, the liver protection it gives them and detoxification, and the immune system enhancement. These are all now known facts. These are known for chaga. And here's just a, a short uh, review of in the last 10 years, studies mostly from, from China, from Japan, from Korea, uh, from Russia, uh, demonstrate these qualities, and each of these is a scientific studies. I'll show you some of them to demonstrate this is not just uh, something we think about, we can actually measure. So here's again a picture of chaga, you know, growing on a birch tree. It's quite different than the other mushrooms, which have other characteristics. And there are many uh, books out now about all of these mushrooms, and they talk about chaga and other ones. Mushrooms are seen as functional foods. They actually change our functionality, our physiology in the body. Um, they have been studied uh, by many cultures, more in the East than in the West. And these books you can easily get, uh, Paul Stamet's book, uh, Michael Medicinal's, uh, Christopher Hopp's book, who's an acupuncturist uh, near where I am in California, uh, called Medicinal Mushrooms and a very scholarly treatise there on the right by uh, Peter Chong. If you go into the PubMed, which is the publication that the government uses for the National Library of Medicine, and you ask about Chaga, you'll find 83 scientific listed studies in there. And most of these articles have really appeared because this is a modern medical database since 2000. So this is really being intensely studied now. That makes it really up to date. If you go on the internet and you type in the search word chaga mushrooms, you'll find 193,000 references. Always interesting to me how many times you, know, you can Google something and find it. If you type in the keyword Inonotus obliquus, which is the uh, traditional name, the scientific name for it, you'll find almost 85,000 references and you'll have a long time studying all these so you know uh, let me condense some of what you would find okay so here's just a picture you can see it's growing this is in 2009 at the highest number of studies and it's gone even higher in 2010 and 2011 today um, a great review article which is on the website is from a Russian Shashkina uh, which was published in 2006 which talks about the pharmaceutical chemistry. It's in Pharmaceutical Chemistry Journal, uh, and it gives a great overview of the biochemical properties. Uh, another great Chinese article came out uh, also in uh, 2009 called Progress on Research on this Mushroom, on Inonotus obliquus or Chaga, 
uh, from the Chinese uh, Journal for Integrative Medicine. So again, we're seeing they're very interested in it, and you'll find those also on the website. Uh, these are just some of the names. Uh, there's a pop quiz at the end for all these names. You have to know these. Uh, <laughs> but uh, these are the triterpenes, which are uh, special molecules within chaga that have been discovered through very laborious chemistry. And um, if you can look at one of these here, for example, 3-beta-22-R dihydroxylanosteine A24-diene, the short name for that is inonotol, um, ino, inotodiol, sorry, inotodiol. So uh, that's, we're going to talk about this one triterpene uh, a little later on because it's extremely good in helping cells who are, that are out of control die. It's called apoptosis. It does that. And we'll talk about those. So this gives you just some of the chemistry they have. These are all chemical names and chemical formulas. Other substances found in chaga include uh, um, water-soluble lignins. They are special types of polyphenols. They have shown in cell culture studies they work against the HIV-1 virus that we know causes a condition called AIDS. Uh, there's antivirus compounds, uh, uh, betulinol, uh, chlorodol, fungisterol, uh, there are beta-glucans in this. These are sugars I'll talk about in a minute. Those of high molecular weight, not the small sugars. They affect um, the one type of the immune system called humoral immunity uh, and certain type of cells called macrophages and beta-lymphocytes or B-lymphocytes. Then there's other sugars in it. They're called endopolysaccharides, meaning many sugars and internally uh, and that I'll talk about. And even interestingly enough, uh, this is very important for cardiovascular kind of conditions. There's even a uh, short uh, combination of three amino acids tri uh, for tryptophan, glycine, and cysteine, the sulfur amino acid. When they combine together, they stop platelets from getting too stuck together. It's called aggregation. This is what causes thrombi or uh, heart attacks and strokes. And this is in there as an antiplatelet, antiplatelet aggregation factor. So, you know, it has various different chemical things in there. Now, the most important thing to recognize is a lot of these things that are in chaga haven't been fully understood yet. They're still just researching this very intensely and there's many future mysteries coming about. So we're going to talk about uh, these things the polysaccharides, the inotodiol, the betulinic acid, the melanin, the polyphenols, uh, the triterpenes, which are anti-inflammatory, and some of the other nutrients. I want you to really get a sense how wonderful this extract actually is. It's extremely complex, and I just want you to get a sense of that, that there's much to be still discovered. We're not through it yet. So if we like, look at these things together, I'm going to talk about these five things, the polysaccharides, on a, I know todiol, betulinic acid, melanin, and the polyphenols primarily, uh, and the other triterpenes, you know, there isn't enough time to go in it, but perhaps this picture might be something you might want to remember. I call these the big five, you know, not the sports, sporting goods store, but the big five in Chaga, okay? Um, there's the polysaccharides, or they're also called beta-glucans, which are immune enhancer and help cell communications work better. There is melanin, which I want to focus on a little longer today because I call it the energizer, like the Ever Ready Bunny. It really has wonderful things because it protects our genes, repairs our DNA when it's broken, which of course broken DNA is one of the causes that can lead to uh, cancer and other major diseases. There's the polyphenols, which have the primary antioxidant effect. They, French, uh, they quench uh, free radicals, and free radicals aren't the guys from the 60s with long hair. Uh, <laughs> free radicals are unpaired electrons that cause uh, breakdown of cellular membranes. They cause oxidative stress. So we want antioxidants, and there's inotodiol, the lanosterol, triterpene, 
as I mentioned, that help cells die when they're out of control, like cancer cells never want to die, they just keep going. And so at apoptosis is a big field of research in that. And then there's betulinic acid, which is a virus and tumor fighter uh, that's been studied a lot in Russia. And again, I want to stress, I'm sharing with you the cellular and the animal studies, and we will find out over time how well this works in humans, but in scientific uh, research, you always look at cell and animal studies first before they do human studies. And down the road, I'm sure if there is money for research, they'll be doing human studies. We want to use this product as preventative and as health giving. And so never really talk about this in terms of disease. It's very important. However, there's much to be learned from these animal and cell studies. So let's first talk about these sugars, the sugars that heal the polysaccharides, okay? And uh, polysaccharides are primarily immune modulators. They help the immune system, they engage the immune system in different ways. There are many different types of polysaccharides we use in our body. For example, starch or glycogen that you store in your liver is a kind of uh, sugar. It has many different glucose. Uh, and other sugar molecules linked in a complex tree-like network. Then there are structural polysaccharides like celluloses and trees that animals can digest, but we can't, but it's filler. And it's good for us to eat lots of roughage, not to get uh, colon cancer and so on. And then there's immune polysaccharides that, that modulate the immune system. And these are what's important in chaga, the immune polysaccharides. And then there's very small sugars called eight essential saccharides and they're in things like aloe vera and so on and other foods because this is often what people don't get enough of, the essential sac uh, saccharides. So the body can break these polysaccharides, these long chain sugars down into smaller ones to make them digestible, okay? So these are the, some of, uh, just a background on what sugars are. So sometimes you hear the word beta-glucans. Beta-glucans are essentially how these sugars are linked and the, the way they are linked, whether they branch off in this way or linked together this way or twisted around is the way the chemists look at that. But these polysaccharides help the cardiovascular system, the immune system, uh, hormonal balances, and now we see that in animals they've shown to be very helpful for various diseases, uh, viral, bacterial, and so on. So researchers have now started to look at that one of the polysaccharides that's in, in chaga is a fucoglucomannan. Fucose is one of those simple sugars. Glucose is another one, and, and mannose. So uh, the complex fucoglucomannan is a polysaccharide that has immune-stimulating properties. And uh, Remember that this is an adaptogenic herb, it, uh, an adaptogenic mushroom. It helps the body balance. What's overactive is brought down. What's underactive seems to be brought up. That's what an adaptogen does. And uh, the water extracts have been shown in scientific studies to be extremely effective. Uh, people always ask, should it be an alcohol extract? Alcohol can uh, extract other things, but alcohol is also a kind of poison, you know, when things ferment, they become, they can develop alcohol and so on. Uh, that's in fact how we make our alcoholic beverages. So we really want to take it in a water form the way it's traditionally used because that's uh, the teas that the Siberians brewed and so forth. So um, another thing to recognize and in the studies on polysaccharides they seem to affect the, immune, the uh, humoral immune system more than the uh, cellular immune system. You have to understand that the immune system has two components. When you get uh, infection from a bacterium, say, the body ramps up certain lymphocytes and they start producing various types of antibodies and other things and the body remembers this and cells transform into things called plasma cells and then you have this so-called humoral defense. This is like a defense against uh, viruses, bacteria and so forth. There is another part of the immune system that's called the cellular immune system that the body says there are abnormal cells here 
and uh, certain cells like T lymphocytes uh, and killer cells and so on get involved and they start basically hunting down the aberrant cells and trying to destroy those and that's called cellular immunity. This is very important when you do plant, uh, transplant medicine and so on because the cellular immune system has to be kept at bay not to reject, say, a heart that's been transplanted. So there's two types of, uh, of the immune system, two arms, and um, the polysaccharides seem to help more the humoral immune system, uh, and they do modulate the cellular immunity um, uh, somewhat, but not directly. So polysaccharides are not directly tumor killing. They modulate the body's immune system so it can do a better job functioning and the immune system seems to know what to do inside the body. Here's a study to show from 1998 that the water extract affected cancer's mitotic index. So when cells divide, and cancer cells divide very fast, there's a process called uh, mitosis, and if you want to find out if certain cells have a greater cancer-like activity, they look at the mitotic index. This showed that the water extract actually affected enzymes and did that, and it was concluded that the water extract, the aqueous extract, actually was a fo uh, important in the cell studies. So that's important to show that the water really, extract really does work. Here's a Japanese study from 1999 showing that in uh, cell cultures and in animals, um, that the active principle, the glucans, the beta-glucans, the heteroglycans, and the protein complexes they were associated with actually help to lower blood sugar in animals. So it seems to have uh, an effect to help people with high, or animals with high blood sugar. We don't know fully whether it'll do the same for people because we don't have all those studies, but there's a lot of interesting stories that people tell uh, so I just want to show you what's being done in animals and in cells. Here's a study from 2005, and these are just illustrative, again, uh, that the immune system is, is uh, stimulated, again, by these special endopolysaccharides that uh, don't show any direct toxicity against tumor cells, but they have an indirect anti-cancer effect with immune stimulation. So that's how these particular compounds work in the body. And, um, you know, what, the per, uh, what an animal would do in response to uh, a tumor being implanted or uh, spontaneously developing, like some animals are bred to have tumors that are used then in medical research for studies, is to see how these special molecules would work. Uh, here's a study that's from 2006 to show that the polysaccharide showed immune stimulation and the animals that got them had a fourfold increase in survival time. They lived four times longer than the ones that didn't get chaga. After 60 days of feeding, 67% of these mice survived with no tumor incidence when they examined them, but um, the anti-cancer effect in these animals from these polysaccharides it's not directly killing the tumor, but again, it stimulates the tumor. So these things all reinforce this, um, and um, we don't quite know the mechanism of all of this yet. This is hot in study, in scientific study, but it just, uh, I just want to tell you that the beta-glucan is a very important component of Chaga, but it's only one out of many. And here is a book, uh, in case you're interested in these so-called glyconutrients, the sugars that heal, by uh, Dr. Mondoa, a medical doctor, that shows the benefits of these polysaccharides. So it's important just to know about them. There's about eight of these, uh, and they are derived from polysaccharides. All right, let's talk about inotodiol. That's one of those really long chemical names, but it's been isolated. And it was first studied actually in Poland and most of this early work was all out of Russia and out of Poland. Uh, it was isolated there in 1962 and was studied for its potential uh, anti-cancer compounds in uh, the former East Bloc. Now it's more part of Europe, as you know. Uh, and it affects what's called programmed cell death. Again, I want to just give you a sense that when you have uh, you talk to people who have cancer or you talk to animals, your dogs develops a cancer. What actually goes on there? What goes on is that the cells 
don't know how to stop and they don't have something called programmed cell death. They are like immortal cells. They don't talk to each other. It's like renegade neighbors that are all doing their own thing. Okay, and it's not a good thing. There is no community communication taking place. Community and communication is really what we need. And so this thing called apoptosis, technical name for programmed cell death, doesn't take place. So I know Tody all of us then synthesized in, in, uh, in Russia in 1991, and it was shown to have very strong anti-tumor promoting activity in various tests. And here's some examples of that. Uh, a study from 2008 that I know Tody all uh, at a certain dosage prolonged the survival time in tumor bearing mice. Those are mice that already naturally develop tumors and it inhibits, it inhibits cell proliferation through a certain mechanism, it's called caspase 3 activation. You know, these are all technical terms that oncologists study, but it really tells that there is actually a mechanism by, the, by, by this works. Inotodiol and the lanosterols that are in Chaga uh, were studied in Korea, and again, they showed uh, that it has these apoptosis effects. So, you know, that's a very important thing. If we can get cells to kind of start to respond to their abnormal growth pattern, you know, you can win quite a bit of the war. And again, uh, we are using this to prevent things. We're using this as a health promoting agent, not to get into the place where people get into having cancer and tumors. We don't want that. It's hard to stop the process. It means degeneration has happened a long time. Inflammation has been present because inflammation is there in all chronic degenerative diseases. So we don't want this. Now, this substance I've always thought was one of the most important substances for various reasons because melanin is found throughout all the animal and vegetable kingdom. And melanin is the very thing that you have in your hair and in your skin that gives you the color. Whether you're more red, whether you're more brown, whether you're tan, whether you're not, is because the melanin produced by your skin in the parts of the cell called melanocytes or the pigment of your skin. And some people who have a condition called vitiligo where they, their skin looks blotchy and they have white patches, they don't make this pigment. When you're exposed to ultraviolet radiation, you make more of it. Now, melanin is what gives chaga its dark color. Chaga, that's what's so rich in this mushroom compared to the other mushrooms. And what they found in, in Russia, it, it protects genes and it actually repairs broken DNA. Isn't that wonderful? You, something breaks down because you're exposed to chemicals or radiation. Think of the people of Japan right now in 2011 who are suffering from huge amounts of radiation. What could we do to help them repair their, you know, prevent cancer developing? Well, you need a DNA repairer and that's what melanin does. You know, just think what you can tell people who have families over there and so on. So this is a complex molecule. It's found in the brain. It's found in your adrenal glands. Um, it's a powerful free radical scavenger. In other words, it again, it helps the body prevent this oxidation, so it's an antioxidant. And I believe this is what makes chaga, among other things, one of the more special um, mushrooms that are out there. Now, just look at this. Uh, I hope you can read this, that 40% of the dry weight of chaga is, uh, you know, made up of these water extractable substances and more than half when you dry it of that extract, which is 25% of the original material, is actually this coloring, this melanin, it's called a chromogenic complex. It's another name for it makes a dark color. It's a dark color complex and 25% of this mushroom is made up out of this. It's its most distinctive feature. Now, uh, and again, this is in that paper by Shashkina uh, that's uh, on the website. You can learn about the chemical and medical biological properties of chaga, a review study translated out of Russian from 2006. And this paper basically says, you know, there are these polyphenolic, chromogenic, human-like complexes present in chaga. In other words, it's the dark stuff. The, the dark stuff 
the black brown stuff in chaga what makes everything look so dark which this you know put it on your skin and it looks a little darker but somehow it improves in things as we'll talk about in a minute that's what's in chaga and they studied this um, Babets Kaya uh, studied this in 2002, studied this melanin complex, and says it protects the genes in your body. Now, I'm going to switch hats for a minute and talk. Uh, as you, some of you know, I'm also an engineer and a biomedical engineer, and uh, I've designed equipment that we took to the top of Mount Everest and did the first scientific studies on top of Mount Everest to find out why people could live up there. A very rough environment because there's no oxygen there to breathe, and with no oxygen, your brain does, isn't very happy, and neither is all the cells in your body. So up there, there is less atmosphere, and there's an awful lot of light. And so I got really interested back in the 1980s when we did this kind of work with the University of California in San Diego where I was doing a postdoctoral fellowship. Uh, I got really interested also in light. Now, the visible light in the electromagnetic spectrum is only a small part and it's the colors from you know, the deep reds to the purples. But it's in this very narrow band. Below that there is infrared or warmth, infrared light or warmth microwaves that we use for communication nowadays with our cell phones and Wi-Fi and so on. Radio waves are even longer. And then up here are what's ionizing radiation that breaks down things like ultraviolet light, which is faster in frequency, X-rays and gamma rays like we get from atomic reactors and so forth. So light is a very narrow part of the spectrum in what's called nanometers wavelengths, 400 to 700 nanometers. Here's another way of seeing it. Here's the electromagnetic spectrum. Visible light that your eyes respond to and your skin responds to is a narrow part of the spectrum uh, you know, here. Now, when you look at absorption curves in the, uh, in the test tube of melanin, this is what we're talking about. You can see in the blue part of the spectrum over here, the short wavelengths, which is higher energy, melanin has a lot of absorption. And it falls off a little bit, but it's in the same region that our body absorbs also light in forms of hemoglobin when you oxygenate your blood. It's also in that same region. And when you deoxygenate your blood, when the cells take uh, the oxygen up, then you get the bluer blood, which is venous blood. And it's in the same region where melanin absorbs it. So here is another picture of uh, a wider wavelength. This is uh, shorter waves, uh, and these are longer wavelengths. So the longer wavelengths is like where uh, the warmth is. This is the visible part of the spectrum. This part is the shorter uh, ultraviolet part of the spectrum. Notice that water absorbs very well in, uh, in a uh, short wavelength, a high frequency, and in the long wavelength. That's why we can put heat into water and things boil. This is also why science uses all these different types of lasers. You know, when they say, for example, want to treat you with lasers on your skin, and the thing I want you to notice in this simply is that melanin has a very broad absorption of energy, okay? It absorbs light and warmth very, very effectively uh, and it modulates something in the body. And melanin, you can think of, is very analogous to the chlorophyll. That's the green stuff in plants. What makes the plants green? Chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the same molecule as hemoglobin that's in your blood, except hemoglobin has iron in the center and chlorophyll has magnesium in the center. It's like liquid green blood, okay? Now melanin has the same kind of ring structures and so on, and it makes very complex structures and not all melanins are the same. Uh, as we'll talk about in a minute. In fact, there's somebody even studying that and wondering whether energy is directly absorbed from the melanin in your skin and transformed into energy in your body. Okay, and uh, they even think about could in the future, and they're developing this now, they're taking melanin and making batteries out of them that store energy from the sunlight directly. It might in fact become a future source of how we're going to generate energy. Now, let's get back with that little bit of uh, physics background. 
let's talk about melanin inside chaga and melanin inside the body. So it absorbs thousands of times more electromagnetic radiation actually than chlorophyll does. And chlorophyll is what we need to make proteins and sugars, uh, especially sugars, in, in the body. It exists in many other tissues, as I mentioned. It's actually a very important molecule in any woman who's having a baby because the fetus has all this melanin in it, as I'll show you. Okay? And it's thought to be, by some people, a master molecule that actually steers how the body communicates. Uh, for example, Frank Barr, a scientist, wrote a whole article, a whole issue of a journal called Medical Hypothesis saying, you know, melanin is such a special molecule and it's found in the babies, it may have a major role in, uh, in steering things in the body in the whole regulatory system. Melanin's role in embryological organization, that's in the baby's organization, and tissue repair and tissue regeneration may be uh, connected to the major role that it plays to balance the body that's called homeostasis in the autonomic neuroendocrine and immunological system. So in other words, melanin may play a much bigger role than just absorbing all this radiation and when you get it into your body it actually has a major effect on your immune system. Here's a picture of a, one, uh, of a um, baby at 35 days of pregnancy and this is the eye uh, of, of an embryo inside a mother. It's a very tiny little thing. Notice that the eye is pure melanin. That's an amazing picture, isn't it? To see all this melanin is inside and when the embryo first forms there, it's, it's called the dark streak. It's all melanin. Okay, here's an example of a plant. It's an eggplant that has melanin in it and a genetically changed one that is no melanin in it. Notice the size of the two difference. I mean, this is an indirect indication that melanin, you know, directly can transduce energy in the vegetable kingdom. Now, the body uh, is a living matrix, and you really want to get this because this is kind of part of the operating system of your body. You know, and I know that as we're talking about it, you really have to strain a little bit to stay with me, but I think it'll make some sense here. The, the body is actually a communication system where everything is connected to everything else and it works through light. It works through light. It's called biophotons. And in this communication system, cells have connections to other cells called integrins and electrons and light flows between cells. So it's like a supercomputer. Your body is like a supercomputer and the skin is connected to every other part of the body. Kind of like a spider web where everything, when you tuck on one part of the spider web, it connects to everything else. And so these cells connect to the connective tissue, which the skin is part of, and it all works like semiconductors. Now, semiconductors, like computer chips, are made out of silicon. These are living semiconductors. Your body is made out of this complex hyper supercomputer that figures everything out, and this is what energy medicine is all about. And when you put chemicals or drugs or lotions or pesticides or mercury from dental fillings that are leaking into your body, then this matrix gets upset. This matrix does not function. The energy doesn't communicate well. And this is where chaga is, I believe, very useful because it helps you detoxify from all of this. Now here's another form of radiation that's now in our environment. It's called, this is from 2000, uh, from 1990 to 19, uh, 2007. This is the exponential rise of cell phone use in the United States. This is the increase in 2000 to 2010 of radiation in the environment. This is what we're living in. Here's an example. I just brought one of my, my little, um, uh, this is a meter that measures um, the microwave in this room that you're sitting in. Okay, this, this is measuring that. You can actually hear, you can hear, you know, the wireless. I can point it exactly where the most radiation is coming from. These are the communications. That, 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 that is your Wi-Fi that's in this hotel. 
This is what people are living in nowadays. You know, in this, we don't know it because you don't feel it, you don't have a sense for it, you need a machine or, in this case, a microwave detector, you know, so you can see it. So, I'm mentioning this is because we are changing as a species and the kids are changing. Have you noticed how the kids are changing in school? They're not learning so well. They're living with their iPads and their iPods and their cordless telephones and everything else and they're constantly being irradiated. Well, the studies are coming out of Sweden now is showing that after 10 years exposure to cordless phones and cell phones, if you're under a teenager doing that, you have a five-fold increase in brain tumors. Now, this is not being generally talked about, and I don't want to scare people. I just want to tell you what the studies are beginning to show, and it's highly controversial. But you need to do prevention about this, because everybody's using these communicators, and if you read the fine print on them, it says, don't put closer to one inch next to your skin. Look, read your manual. It's a really fine point if you have an iPhone or, you know, if it's a Blackberry, it says an inch. So, you know, this is microwave radiation, but it's modulated once, as you can hear, and that's what the body isn't happy about. So, because of this radiation, there is a, about now in cities between a 100 to a 20,000 fold increase in background microwave radiation since 1980. Because we've put cell phone networks up, now we're putting up smart meters on people's houses in California. They're all using microwaves. And everybody says, well, they're not affecting anything. But we have shown studies, uh, many, many scientific studies, that it causes DNA breakages, and the body generally repairs this DNA. But if you have chaga in your, on your skin, I believe, or in your body, it helps repair these DNA breakages more. So just that reason alone, I think, as prevention, it's a useful product to have. Does that make some sense to you? Yes. Yeah. Because you really, you know, this is what we're living in and we're kind of drowning in this microwave without even knowing it because we don't see it like light or we don't hear it like sound. We don't have a sense for it. And these things take a while. So melanin has a high anti-toxic potential and helps enzymatic processes. It's a non-specific protective agent. It helps against mutation. Uh, it's capable of interacting with other chemicals called xenobiotics uh, that cause oxidation like heavy metals and other things. The body gets rid of them. It's one of the biggest thing. And it has a photo and radio protective activity. In fact, animals fed chaga, as I'll show you in a minute, live longer when you irradiate them with gamma rays, those really high intensity rays that come from atomic bombs and from nuclear reactors. They live a lot longer when they take chaga. They've done studies in animals. Here, 35, 305 days versus the control group died in 186 days. Now, I'm not suggesting any of us get exposed to gamma rays or whatever. Not healthy, you know. But we're living in a world that's a little abnormal. It's not what your grandparents lived in and not even what your parents lived in. So, uh, now, should you take cultured mushrooms, or should you take natural mushrooms? Well, the natural mushrooms have a, a kind of uh, melanin that's called allomelanin, whereas uh, the natural ones, whereas the cultured ones that are grown in cell cultures, like are also sold, they contain a different kind of melanin called eumelanin. So uh, they're quite different chemically, and it's much more helpful to have the, uh, the natural kind because it has different effects. All right, so here is a study with natural melanins. The natural and culture form melanins have rather different chemical structures and differ in biological activity so that the culture form ones cannot substitute for pigments of the natural in preparations of the medicine. So this is another reason. Where was it grown? Oh yes, yeah, so you grew it in cell cultures. Well, it doesn't have the same melanin in it. Okay, very important. Here's in fact an, a curve, here's natural melanin, and see this fine dotted line here that has the highest amount of absorption, and then uh, the, uh, when you change that, you hydrolyze it or you change the chemical structure, it has much lower absorption. So there's different chemical characteristics. It repairs DNA that has broken or mutated, 
It has these high antioxidant gene protecting properties. It's really needed in a toxic world, I believe. And it also helps you absorb more sunlight so you can make more vitamin D in your skin. And now vitamin D is very, very important for not developing cancer. All the doctors are now giving people finally a lot of vitamin D, you know, who need it. You can test for that. Now here's another study that showed the DNA effect. This is a 2004 study. It showed a 40% reduction in the DNA breaking apart. 40% when they gave them chaga. That's huge. That means you're really helping the body repair its DNA. And another study of, out of Ukraine uh, showed that it has high antioxidant effects and again it protects against DNA linking together. See what happens is the genes in, on your DNA are essentially uh, in this beautiful spiral chain. When they get mutations, they cross-link together, and then the DNA doesn't work. It's like throwing a wrench into the car gearbox. It doesn't work in the transmission so well. So you want to, pre you want to heal that. And here's another one. Now this is very interesting because it shows you that the uh, melanin directly affects the gut, uh, what's called the mucosa, which is the lining of your intestines, and it induces the immune cells in your intestines called the Peyer's patches uh, and protects you against invading things. So if you swallow bacteria or viruses or something like that and you have the chaga, the chaga upregulates the Peyer's patches in the gut. That's what it's shown in animals and it helps them and they find this also in echinacea and many other things but not in the high concentrations than the uh, uh, the amount that's present so it says while melanin is present commonly in consumed vegetables its specific activity is several orders of magnitude less than the melanin from botanicals and chaga is a botanical and here's an example this is uh, in mice the uh, immune globulin A production in, in this was studied from, with melanin uh, in these botanicals, much higher. Same thing here with alfalfa increases uh, what's called interleukin-6, which is an anti-inflammatory, and increases, uh, in this case, gamma interferon, which again, all markers to show you have a more competent immune system. Okay. Um, so. Melanin's role is, in fact, even being rethought in medicine that, you know, is it really something that just absorbs sunlight or does it have, does melanin have a role in the immune system in the body and uh, is it really more of an antimicrobial kind of defense against bacteria? Okay, so that was a long story about chaga. We only have one left to go, polyphenols, okay? Polyphenols, what are these? Polyphenols means it has many different six-sided rings. Poly means many, phenol is a six-sided ring. And uh, they're concentrated uh, to be as powerful as vitamins and carotenoids and so on. There's uh, basically all the stuff that's good in vegetables. Everybody's been told to eat a lot of vegetables now. It's because there's flavonoids, phenolic acids, tannins, or lignans or still beans, all of these are polyphenols. There's many different kinds. That's what gives fruits and vegetables their bitter taste or their tartness, their astringency. Okay? The, and uh, so here's an example of them. They have all these rings. You see these are these phenol rings and you have that gives you the color in your vegetables. Uh, it's the uh, things that gives you the tartness in grapefruit. It's the quercetin and the onions and the broccoli and then your apples. This is why you're eating your vegetables to some degree is all these polyphenols, okay? And these polyphenol compounds are primarily in the skin and the berries. And these are also very rich in chaga. So if you don't eat all those vegetables, chaga can help. You know, it has some of that in it. And they seem to reduce the risk of all these chronic degenerative diseases. Here's an example to show that it actually protects against premature aging. They combat oxidative stress. Oxidation is these free radicals tearing apart your membranes. You don't want that. Okay, here's an example. Our results indicate that chaga, I don't know obliquus, has the capacity to scavenge free radicals higher than at a certain concentration. 
uh, and that the polyphenolic compounds, that's these polyphenols, can protect the cells against oxidative stress. And the specific polyphenol, one of them, is DBL, has a long chemical name, which I won't bother you with, but that paper is also there, and it actually works through inducing a common molecule called NF-kappa-B, a special molecule that uh, protects your body, um, um, or if it's induced, it actually causes these degenerative diseases. Chinese study from 2009, again, showed the phenols have potent antioxidant properties, uh, just to illustrate, you know. And um, this is actually the last one, betulinic acid. This is the virus and tumor fighter. It's a, a 30 carbon molecule called a triterpene. It's found in the resin and bark of trees. There's many of these I showed you earlier. Betulinic acid is one of these triterpenes. It's an anti-inflammatory in the body. It works against viruses like the HIV virus. Uh, it seems to help uh, in animals with eczema and so on. Uh, it helps against, uh, in animals against certain cancers called melanoma, very bad skin cancer, and so on. So I just wanted to mention these things. So the uh, betulinic acid and betulin is against, effective against strains of viruses. And recently we had the swine flu virus outbreak. You know, a lot of people worried about that. Well, there's substances in chaga in animal cultures and in, in uh, animal studies and in cellular cultures actually seems to defeat these viruses. Okay, and it's, uh, you know, 100% inhibition. 100% inhibition. Now, you know, if this was a drug, it'd be prescribed by every doctor, but we're not using it as a drug, we're using it as prevention. I want you to really get this down. I just want you to show how effective the substance is. And we had ours tested in the University of Chicago, our chaga, and we showed these high peaks of chaga extract against the standard, you know, same high activity. We know betulinic acid is in this chaga. Well, I, I want to tell you just a few more things that are hot off the press in the last two years. What we're actually finding now, they're finding in mice it helps memory and learning. It helps asthma in animals. There was a threefold decrease in melanoma tumor size in mice. In men. These are all mice animal studies typically. It slows down cellular aging, so it has an anti-aging effect. It increases programmed cell death in colon cancer cells. It has an anti-inflammatory effect. Again, it lowers blood sugar in mice, antioxidant properties, etc. So it's confirming over and over again what the earlier studies showed, but even with better and better. Here's just some example, um, higher brain function. The, you have to have the brain produce a, a chemical called acetylcholine, and it's destroyed by an enzyme called acetylcholinesterase. Well, chaga inhibits that so that the brain can remember better. So this is, for all of you who can't remember what I've said, more chaga, your memory will definitely, you know, potentially improve based on these animal studies. We hope that this will one day happen in you as well. Asthmatic mice were treated and it decreases the number of inflammatory cells and helps asthmatic mice. Melanoma tumors decreased in mice, uh, especially for certain melanoma cells. Cellular aging, pretreatment and then exposing, uh, in this case, uh, the, uh, the mice to various different types of oxidative stress and cell cultures, then the cells don't die as early, which is called senescence. Again, so we have definitely seeing anti-aging and um, you know, protective effects. Canadian study on the infla anti-inflammatory effects, you know, in a cell culture study, we start starting to understand the mechanism more of it using nitric oxide. A study, again, showing the blood sugar lowering effect from 2010 uh, based on four different chemicals inside chaga, other ones. Uh, antioxidant effect, 2011, just off the press, scavenges certain free radicals like hydroxyl and uh, DPPH radicals. And uh, finally, uh, some anti-cancer effects uh, from uh, Korea where they grinded up similar 
uh, a whole different way of delivering it. This is why our uh, aqueous extract works so well, because we extract the same things. And uh, again, another one showing the polysaccharide stimulating the immune system, all the things I've talked about. So why is chaga important today? Well, I think you're getting the drift, you know. It has all these immune system boosting effect. It may help, uh, certainly helps animals with cancer, repairs DNA, quenches free radicals, increases performance and endurance, helps anti-aging. Uh, widespread pollution and toxicity is helped by some of the chemicals uh, and it's being studied now. Protects against radiation damage in animals and works synergistically in just very small amounts which is what we have in the product. So there's the story where we're going. I hope that uh, the science wasn't overwhelming. The important thing are remember the big five that we already know about. Remember there's many more things that we don't know about chaga that's just being researched now. This is a hot topic. People are trying to take chaga apart to find the active ingredients and make medical drugs out of them. I say stay with the core product, stay with the way nature made it and you'll get you know, really good results for prevention, for health promotion, and for longevity. So that's my message for today. Thank you so much. For